Hi, this is Ken and KS Brakes. We are here to continue, begin the installation of rotors and pads on an STI. Uh, we have the Sparta Evolution brake parts that we showed you in the last video. So we've got the car on the lift safely, uh, but we'll kind of go at it as if you might be doing this at home. Uh, although we do like to take advantage of some leverage here. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get a look at everything. Uh, these are This is the tool list and that's, you know, Get the wheel off, etc. Dead blow if needed. Uh, it's pretty quick, uh, so we'll start. First thing we're gonna do is gonna remove the brake pads. Just need a little, little pins here, make some room. Pull those out. That's just a little cotter pin. Don't lose those. They are five dollars each from Subaru. It's a good racket if you can. Pins get kind of gucked up with pad dust and stuff, so they can be a little cranky to push through. Very easy. These brakes are pretty new, so it's a little easier. If you've got a lot of miles, it may be a little more difficult. Anyway, hold down the tab, pull the pins out. Piece of cake. Make a little room, make a little room. Pads out. You can tell those aren't even actually worn a lot, but we're doing a test, so there you go. We're gonna compare to some other uh, well-known brake parts. So I gave a little wiggle room in there, but we'll have to push those pistons back in after we get the rotor swapped. And we'll show you an easy way to do that. There's a lot of piston spreader tools out there I really don't feel like those are absolutely necessary. I've never actually bought one because I haven't needed it. Uh, next thing is to get the caliper off. That's a 19 millimeter. If you use a deep socket like that, that should give you the right, right space you need to get past the, uh, the bolts through the knuckle, etc. And uh, they're a little tight. It may have been pre-loosened, sorry. Now you guys up north, these bolts can be pesky because they get a lot of corrosion. It's a steel bolt into aluminum caliper. Be careful with that. You can pull the threads out of the caliper. You've probably seen that or heard of that before. Um, some PB blaster or et cetera beforehand is not the worst idea if it's been years and or you got a lot of salt and, salt and rust. We'll take a closer look at, at that again in a moment when we uh, have everything off. You don't want to let the caliper dangle by the brake line, so I have a strap here. Just use that to hang it off of these awesome cane coilovers. Get that out of the way. Uh, so, again, up north, you guys have a lot more salt than other way on a Subaru, the winter car, of course. Uh, you may also put a little PB here. It can The rotor can sort of seize to the hub. And if it's really bad, if it's been in there a long time, these threaded holes can be used to push the rotor off the hub. Uh, that's an M8 by 1.25 thread. Uh, you know, thread it in and slowly uh, you kind of jack the rotor off of the hub. But I'm thinking this will come right off because we're in North Carolina and we don't have that kind of rust. So we'll put these aside. Next thing is take a look at your hub. You guys, again, up north, you know, clean a little of this off. It doesn't need to be perfect. You don't need to polish it, but any major scale, rust, or et cetera. 
So it's kind of free. That's easy. Now, again, these bolts that go through the knuckle, that's another place where you can get a lot of rust and corrosion here on the bolt. This, if this gets rust, gets in the threads and into the caliper, that's one way that I feel like the caliper get threads get pulled out. That rust gets in there and kind of seizes it up. And then when you put a, uh, you know, a wrench in there to take it off, it pulls the threads out of the caliper. And then we're going to be into a whole other video doing a time cert, which we don't want to do right now. Uh, we're good though. Uh, these were kept clean and they're uh, probably had a little bit of anti-seize on there even as well. So uh, again, you get rust in here. That's where, that's where things uh, go bad. So keep that in mind. Also, if it's excessively dirty in here in the abutment plates, check those. A lot of stuff gets in there. It's just brake dust and whatnot. I want to make sure it's relatively free. Piston seals and everything, or dust boots look fine. Everything looks good. This is a low mileage car uh, that hasn't seen a lot of bad weather. So we don't see any real issue with it. Everything looks fine in there. That's all clean, just brake dust, which is to be expected. Lastly, if you are going to use some brake grease, the only thing we're really, we don't need to put it on the back. I don't feel like that's useful, although the previous uh, installer did do so. You can see the red there. I like to see a little bit of grease on the end of the pad where it rides on the abutment plate because that's where the motion is. I don't feel like grease is doing anything for noise. The damping coefficient of grease is probably something like zero. All right, so we'll get our parts together. Now this is ready to go back together already, very easy. I think I'll go with clean gloves for the uh, install, however. All right, so let's continue and get the road, new rotors and pads on the car. Again, we're using the Sparta Evolution Performance Pack, pads and slotted rotors. So there's a little grease pack they give you, which I probably can't open. Oh yeah, there you go. We talked about it before, just a little bit along this edge where the movement is. So that'll last about 50 brake jobs. So now those are ready. Again, the rotor is uh, more than clean enough, that pad will make its way onto the disc with no issue. There's no excessive shipping oils or anything on here. So, again, up north, they may want to use just a bit of anti-seize on the hub if you feel like it. But uh, down here in North Carolina, we don't do that. So just put her on there and... Very good. Caliper's ready to go. Go with the disc. Not much to see here other than Find it and get it started. All right, 19 millimeter. We'll snug it with the socket, or rash it first and then torque it. Uh, now, there's always been a lot of talk about the torque spec on these bolts. I believe Subaru may at one have listed it as something like 140 foot pounds, which feels like a lot if you ask me. It is a caliper bolt, so it's a pretty high number. Might be something around 100, give or take. Feels like that's not going to come off.
Now we don't have to push the pistons back back much here because the brakes were new. So the first thing we'll do is just see if we go in. We're trying to keep that clean if we can, but a little nothing's gonna hurt it. So we gotta make a little room here. Maybe the inner one should slide right down in there. There we go. There's one. Now while that's there, one easy way to do it is take the old pad. Push it back. Just be careful. Don't pinch anything expensive. That should be enough. It looks like you're gonna have to make a little. Oh no, there we go. Once it's in, you can easily make a little more space. Get that in there. That's there. So line up that hole for the cotter pin ahead of time. Can't see it. All. There it is. And a little tap is easy. That one's ready to go. So now on the bottom one, you're going to have pressure. So it's going to be a little, a little, a little more finagling going to have to occur. You got to make sure that hole's lined up. Once you get there, so the, the cotter pins in, and there you have it. Brakes are installed, rotors on, pads in. We're ready to go to the rear. That was quick. Thanks.